New York City, it's your mayor, Eric Adams. Welcome to the Get Stuff Done cast. Let's get to it. I'm here with oh, who I consider uh, not to only be a great entrepreneur, uh, but really just a great citizen and a great humanitarian, uh, my good friend, uh, Haki Akdenez. Uh, we spend uh, the nights together on Wednesday nights, you know, not on a date, but, you know, we go out and feed New Yorkers. Uh, every Wednesday night, we, at, we are at uh, the People's Connecting New York food distribution to those who are down on their luck. Not only those who are living in homeless shelters, the organization with the acronym PCNY, uh, just a team of everyday New Yorkers who come together and really uh, give their uh, support to their fellow brothers and sisters. And it's part of my overall theme of one hour a week. If we could just dedicate one hour a week, uh, we could do so much, uh, Haki. And, you know, you do more than one hour, but I, I, I believe it's almost uh, contagious that once you start, uh, you never give get enough. And, you know, I want you to go and share with your experiences. When I first met you and hearing your story, it just was so inspirational. And so why don't you take us back? Uh, how did you start? Uh, you, you, you're you from the the uh, the pizza guy, I like to call you, uh, with your champion pizza uh, with several locations. But take us back and let the listeners know your or the origin of your story. Thank you for having me. And it's always, I always say it's an honor to see you and see you, see you. I don't know if you remember, like I met you like a year and a half ago. And uh, you told me, you know, like I told you a little bit about my story. And I told you a little bit. I said, I'm not just making pizza. We do a lot of other things about especially giving back. And you promised me, if I invite you, you will come join us. Do you remember that? Yes, at, I do. Alibaba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before you become Alibaba. a year. Yeah, I have the, I have the <laughs> we, video. We took the, a picture. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. When I was teenage, I went to Canada. And my brother, he had a pizza shop. I worked with him for a couple of years. And I couldn't get my green card. And I decided to move to New York. A friend of mine, he lives over here. And uh, he promised me if I come over here, he will help me you know, find me a job and find the place that I can stay. So when I came over here, I'm going to go fast forward. He made me wait two and a half day at Port Authority bus station. Mm. I mean, you know, he just, he, he, he didn't help me. And I don't speak a word of English. Mm. Um, I find like cheap motel. I stay over there about like a week. I have $240 in my pocket. My money finished and I don't know what to do. I cannot go back in Canada and I don't want to go to Turkey. Mm. When you came to the city, you slept your first few days at the Port Authority? Two and a half days. Two and a half days yeah. at the Port Authority. Yeah. Wow. And mm -hmm. I found a cheap motel. I stayed over there mm -hmm. for like a, maybe like a week. So then when my money finished, I have like small luggage and I just walked on New York City street. Okay, just nighttime sleep in the street and daytime and you just go, you know, ask a people a couple in a change. You could not speak English at the not time. Not even one word. Mm. I speak French and mm -hmm. Turkish and Polyvoo Kurdish. Polyvoo <laughs> <laughs> And um, so, you know, like I stay about like maybe about two weeks on the street as a homeless. And I find Bowery Mission as a homeless shelter. I heard, you heard that. How did, you, how did you find that so, homeless shelter? Yeah, I met one guy from Senegal. His name Ronnie. Mm. He speaks French and he was homeless as well and train station. Mm -hmm. And we talked. He said, there's a place, if you go over there, you can sleep, you eat, you know, like everything's free. And, I said, and that wow. was the Bowery Mission. The Bowery Mission. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I stay over there for 96 days. Yeah. And, uh, well, I mean, that's what I'm, that's what I'm so, you know, like, I'm so thankful because mm -hmm. of Bowery Mission. Right. And uh, from there, it was not easy. But tell me about that thankfulness. Uh, it was in a five-star hotel. It was a homeless shelter. Uh, why were you thankful? Why didn't you feel as though, hey, I deserve more? Why do I have to stay here in this shelter? I mean, we always have to be thankful what we have. It's not about like what we need. It's about what we have. Mm. And even though know, like so many or million of people, they don't have a food and to eat. Like so many parents, 
they cannot afford the food bring home for their kids. And you know, like that moment when I have it, like the, the Bowery Mission, at least I have to eat, the place I was staying sleep, and I could take a warm shower. But before that, I don't have those opportunity. I don't have that, you know, option. And and, 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 the, and the Bowery Mission is an amazing organization. For many years, they've been doing this. Uh, I believe in the man's low hierarchy of needs, food, shelter, clothing, that allows us to get to the place of self-actualization. But there's a journey between that and those 96 days. What did you observe during those 96 days? I was, you know, when I was staying there, I was collecting cans, you know, the Pepsi can, like those cans. And there was a Chinese guy, he came over to the van on Prince Street and Bowery. And I smoke a lot of cigarettes. So just, I want to be able to buy a cigarette and smoke, you know, <laughs> and to go to McDonald's to get like burger, you know, like the dollar burger. Mm -hmm. But we, we all go through a lot of struggle. I'm, I'm not too special because, you know, like, you know, just right now, I open like so many locations. We all go through a lot and we, we should all understand, you know, like who live on the street and we only help, mm. you know, we all need sometimes someone to help you with anything, with any advice. It could be just, you know, like advice, with, not just financially, with anything that people that can help. And the, the, the moment, you know, like when I was over there, a lot of people, so many people, they could give up, but I couldn't give up. Wow. Just go forward, forward, forward. And I, when I come over here, I want to leave my American dream. I come over here with big hope. From outside, when we look in this country, it's, 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 it's a big hope. Hope of, you know, like, it's, it's, it's hope of uh, with everything. You know, like, I, I, I think I saw one of your interviews, you said, like, there's only one dream. It's called American <laughs> dream. That's no, it's, it's a very true and it's very powerful. You know, like, and that dream, you know, like, we all can achieve that dream. Wow. If we work so hard, we don't give up. And you know what? Before everything, we have to be kind. Because kind is, is a key of success. When you be kind, don't just give to get. Give to inspire other people to give. Well said. When we well do said. that, when we do this, and that's everything is possible. Well and said. That, that was me, you know, like Bowery mentioned that teach me those. Well said. You know, for those who probably are listening inside, I just want to know with with Haki uh, acting as a, from Champion Pizza, and we're talking about his beginning days, spending 96 days in a homeless shelter, uh, his days of sleeping in the Port Authority bus terminals of when he came from New York to Canada. And so how do we transition into uh, those tough days of looking at the McDonald dollar menu and getting that hamburger to the point that you saw there was some possibility. What was your first real job? I work in a pizza shop. <laughs> I found a yeah, job in Hoboken. Mm -hmm. So for me, the first, I take train from uh, Lower East Side to go in Hoboken. It take me maybe like eight hours or 10 hours. I was lost. I don't know the direction, take the train. And I went over there, the boss, he gave me the job. And it, he's so funny, you know, like, he, he, like he's, right now he's my best friend. <laughs> yeah. So he gave me the bread, he dough, and I stretch it. I put an oven, I mess it up. I was so nervous. Because <laughs> I, I say, if I make a mistake, he's not going to give me a job. And I said, could you give me another chance? He said, yes, go ahead. I open another dough, and I put an oven, I mess it up that piece as well. And, you know, he got angry. He used, you know, now we're good. Like effort, <laughs> he said, take it off. And um, he gave me a job as a dishwasher. I work over there for about like, almost like four months as a dishwasher. But the first paycheck he gave me, I went bathroom because you know, like, when I get my first paycheck, you know, like I couldn't come back in Hobok, from Hoboken to Bowery Mission. I was sleeping bench, right across the street. Cause I don't know how to, I thought, I thought Hoboken is so far from New York. And I couldn't be able to come here. I was sleeping bench. Mm. And the first paycheck he gave me, I went to the bathroom. And I cried a lot. Mm. And the manager, he heard me. He knocked the door. And I opened the door. He told me, why are you crying? It's, it's so little money. I know, I know. It's not too much money. He told me. I said, no, no. That's a lot of money. $300. <laughs> wow. It was a lot of money for me. Mm. Today, for me, that 300 is like 30000 Wow. Because the first paycheck, is, it changed my life. It changed everything. Mm -hmm. And that's what I say. You know, we have to be thankful. 
How did you get to Hoboken? Why did you decide Hoboken? Because we have a lot of pizza shops in New York. Why you know Hoboken? what? I, I'm not going to mention the names. You mm. know, I'll, I'm one, I went almost maybe like 50 pizza shop. I was looking for the job and no one, you know, like. Okay. Gave okay. me a job at that time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know like first because the language and second thing because, you no, know, like it's just, I couldn't, you know. Did I you, couldn't. at that time, did you start it to pick up? Uh, different words in English? Were you able to sort of begin the process of communicating? Uh, I didn't go to school. Mm -hmm. I just talked to people. Right. And I love reading book. And, you know, reading a book, a newspaper, and that's what I keep the word, you know. I'm not speaking English, by the way. Just, <laughs> so yeah. you spent a few months in Hoboken, and uh, how did you find your way back to New York City? I walked over there. I met one guy. We become, he was my manager. We become best friend. And uh, our dream, we, we want to open our own pizza shop. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I'm going to, I don't want to, I don't want to miss that part, you know. So mm -hmm. the owner, I thought he's going to fire me. When he gave me $300, the manager go talk to the owner. I thought he will fire me if he know that I'm homeless. But instead he fired me, he gave me a hug and he cried because I cried. He, he cried. He took me to his home and I sleep his home for like maybe like months until I get a place to stay. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. It was, I, I never, I cannot forget that moment. So me, my best, we become best friend, the manager at a pizza shop. We save money for four years and we want to open pizza shop. And two days before we can sign a contract that the guy, I call him like, you know, like the best friend and my, I would call like hero that moment. He took every hour safe run away. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So I cry like a little baby. I mm -hmm. cry again. And you they, ever see him again? I never see him again. I you know like that moment I was, you know, I was, I pray for God, you know, like God punish him. But today I don't want to say that. Mm -hmm. It's okay. <laughs> you it's can, okay. Mm -hmm. You cannot pray for God to right. punish others. Right. Because we all make mistakes. Right. We right. all go through a lot. Mm hmm. And we're not quite sure what he was going through to make him so desperate to take the savings, you know? No, no, so, so, so true. Sometimes, sometimes you would see someone carry out an action that is really hurtful to you. And then you learn that the, what they were going through, it, it made them go out of their character. Uh, a normal person that has a lot of compassion and care can be at the end of their rope and they would do things that is out of their character. And, you know, all you could hope is that whatever they needed the money for, that it was able to bring them back into their character, you know. And how did you get back to New York? I find a pizza place, that pizza shop, they closed on, mm -hmm. and I find a pizza uh, job at the Times Square. You just knew pizza was your destiny, huh? <laughs> I, I, I've, been, I've been making pizza home my life, by the way. Okay. Age 13 from Canada. Okay, okay. And and back at home, I, we, I don't know if you heard, it's it called Lahmacun. Mm -hmm. It's Turkish pizza. Okay. It's very thin crust. Mm -hmm. I found that job and I saved money again mm -hmm. for another five years. Mm -hmm. I worked like seven days, 18 hours. I don't, I don't know about sleep, I don't know about tired. I just want to save that money and, right. you know, like open my first pizza shop. Okay. And, you know, like, I opened my first pizza shop in Lower East Side. The place I was staying, Bowery Mission, it's just like four blocks away from there. So I always say, you know, things happen for a reason. That's exactly, that's what happened. Mm -hmm. And just like a couple blocks away. And the first pizza shop, when I opened, the neighbor, they were not welcome me because the guy, he was Italian, old man, everybody loved him, you know, old school. Turkish guy is going to make a pizza. So, you know, <laughs> it was like, you know, awkward a little bit for people. Right, right. But... And, you know, like, uh, I was about to close the business. I was After how many months? Uh, three months. Okay. And yeah. you, were, you were not getting the business. That's well, I was, you know, like the first month, I was making money. Mm -hmm. But the second month, the business, it goes slow. Third month, it was very slow. The fourth month, the landlord told me, if you don't pay the rent, I'm going to kick you out. Mm. But I own the pizzeria owners, 40000 as well. Mm. So I couldn't pay him as well. He told me, I will put you oven. <laughs> If you don't pay me, I will put you over. But he's, he's a great guy, right? Now we right. always talk. He right, helped me a lot. Right. <laughs> and, you know, what happened, you know, like, the reason, you know, like, I'll become success in the pizza business is not because I don't make a good pizza. I make really good pizza, I know, because it's all my life. Mm -hmm. I don't know nothing about running business. 
to run a business is not easy at the moment if you don't know. Mm -hmm. And it was so hard. I couldn't be able to pay my rent. So first thing, I give up my apartment. I pay $1,200. I give up my apartment. I sleep in under my pizzeria, the mm. pizza oven. I will sleep over there, seriously. Right. And we were like four guys. I have to let two guys go, just me and my the kitchen guy. We work. The guy, he was going home. So, you know, like I have to make a dough sauce, everything until he come. Mm -hmm. I used to go to gym, take a shower with his member card, member uh, membership card. Yeah, because I couldn't take a shower. Right. I have to go take a shower someone to go to gym. Right. And, you know, like what, what saved me and survived me that store, changed everything. It was a pizza championship. Okay. 2010. Mm -hmm. So I compete from 2005 to 2010. I was, you know, not able to win. Mm -hmm. And first time I get, it was like 93 people. I get 87th place. I thought I was a pizza master, but there was like, oh my God, <laughs> people like, there was flipping dough, like breaking dance, like blame for that. So how right, they make it? Right. <laughs> yeah. What they practice. I, I like us. I, I, I hate to give up. Give up never, sh give up never, you know, like should be like any option mm -hmm. to choice to anyone. Mm -hmm. And I don't like to give up. I just do practice for five years. Right. And 2010, mm -hmm. I become world pizza champion. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It so was, the first year was 2000 what? 2005. Was the first year? The first year, yes. The and first year. And 2010, I won the championship. So you came, you came back in five, in five years. years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So one. How was the business that thus far? Was business picking up? around the time when you were behind in your rent, you were about to be thrown in the oven, you know? <laughs> so how, how was business? Was business starting to pick up? Oh, uh, the beginning, like, you know, the first, when I come, uh, when I become champion, so mm -hmm. the TV, they come interview me, mm -hmm. and I think it was Daily News, they make like article. And Turkish guy, he won the championship, you know, like it was nice article. Yes. And the PMQ magazine, the semi magazine, they put me in full cover of the magazine. So they sent me about like 50 copy mm -hmm. and those copy like uh, the, the magazine I put on top of table and the kids, they love it. <laughs> so the kids, they take her home and, you know, like I thought the kids, they were still in and the guy, my kitchen guy said, no, no, they love it. So I put it back again, the kids, they take it again. Mm -hmm. So I finished those 50 magazine and the little girls came to me. She asked me, you know, like, could you give me an autograph? I said, what autograph? Come on, I'm pizza guy. <laughs> and, you know, she asked me autograph. So I don't, I just said, thank you very much. I don't right. know what else to say. <laughs> I give her, and there's another boys, they came with parents. They, they take a selfie with me. Mm -hmm. So really, wow. So this magazine worked. So you became, you became an instant celebrity. On the Lower East Side. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, like, I call a PMQ magazine, the founder, and he sent me like two cases mm -hmm. of the magazine. Okay. So I go to front school. I was given the people and stay menu. I was given my magazine to kids. And from there on, it just, you know, I become so blessed. Wow. I opened second, third, fourth, fifth. Mm -hmm. You know, like I opened like 16 restaurants until 2020. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. Yeah. Now, and, how many, now, how many pizzerias do you have open now? Right now, Champion Pizza, I have eight locations. Mm-hmm. And I have like four other small businesses. Altogether, like 12. And how, how did you overcome or what were the obstacles with the English barrier as you tried to communicate and run your business? The beginning, it was hard. Mm -hmm. You know, especially like when, you know, like I was getting ticket every time, you know, like for health department, building department, because I don't know. I know mm -hmm. nothing about it. And the, 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 the language, I think, was the biggest issue for me for beginning. But, you know, like, like I say, you know, like to, to not run a business, to run a business, it was okay. Okay. It was okay. okay. It was mm -hmm. okay, yeah. Will you, what do you believe was the tipping point where people started to come in and say, hey, the Turkish guy can make a good pizza? Well, I mean, you should not listen to anyone. You have to believe yourself. Mm -hmm. If you believe yourself and if you really believe that you do like 100%, then people's going to believe you and people's going to love what you do. And so when did that happen for you? Because you said the first... One year later. Okay. Yeah. So you the held on. Year. You held on during that period of time until yeah. one year later. Yeah. And people started coming into the shop. Exactly. Because you know, the first pizza shop, you know, like when I opened, I was like all my left over the food because I was not busy. Mm -hmm. And I was taking the boxes. I was going to train station and just give to people. I don't put a... I don't believe they put food the waste. Mm -hmm. I always go give the people. I don't know what the Bowery machine, it was like like four blocks away from me. I mm -hmm. didn't even know that. 
Mm, okay, uh, okay. So the neighbor, they saw, you know, like, I do really good things. Mm-hmm. I'm a good person, good human. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like, and the neighbor welcomed me more. Okay, yeah, okay. And, you know, then I go, like, all the events, you know, like. So, you, so you, you were very active uh, at the time. Active giving back. Okay, that's yeah. so, so important. Now, where did the name champion come from? Like, I, I would have thought, you know, from Turkey, it would have been Istanbul or Cappadocia or Italia pizza. Like, where, where did champion come from? Yeah, so the first pizza shop, it was Haki's Pizza. It was Haki's Pizza? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's not going to yeah. go over well. <laughs> yeah, so when I won, when I won, when I won the championship, uh-huh. you know, like, the champion is like about not giving up, you know, the champion. That's why you become champion. Okay. So me, I didn't give up. I worked so hard. I want to like achieve my dream and want to become the world pizza champion. I said, this name is a beautiful name. I want to put a champion. But the trademark, the name, it was so hard. I make that happen too. Wow. Yeah. Love it. You know, yeah. and, and when you, when you give back, you get back. 100%. And you give back uh, not only what you do on Wednesday when we come together, but you give back all the time. So what would you say to businesses at this time? around giving back when so many people are in need? What would be your advice? The business owners, you know, like when you started giving back, you cannot stop. There's so many pizzerias right now, you know, like they get inspired by my story, how I do. Mm-hmm. And so many pizzerias right now, they're giving back as well. That's excellent. And it's not only pizzeria, we should all restaurants own, you know, I know we work so hard. We do everything, you know, like to make the you know, living better life for our kids to go better school. Yes. Better education. But, you know, like, don't give to get. Give, just give, give. You will get it back. You no, well get, said. Because you will be safe. You will be survived. Mm-hmm. You will be healthy. You will be happy. You will be everything. And how long have you been, you know, really volunteering with the Ellen McGuire Foundation and PCNY? How long have you been, have you been volunteering with them? I've been joined with them for seven years, I will say. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We used to be like on, on 8th Avenue, mm-hmm. on 34th Street. Mm-hmm. But right now we are on 34th Street. But yes. before you we were on, on 8th Avenue. Mm-hmm. So there were, I will say like seven years with them. But we have like not only just, you know, I do like four days a week. I don't do just like one, we know. So we do that one. We do like Sunday on Delancey Street mm-hmm. and Aldred as a church. Mm-hmm. Same thing is about two, three hundred homes people that come over there. Mm-hmm. Over there, we give them haircut as well. Who is this? That's on Sundays? That's a Sundays. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, yeah. I have to meet you over there. Would you please, if yes, you don't I mind, would, it would, I would be love amazing. That. I was really uh, touched by your donation with uh, your sales in one of your stores that you were donating the proceeds uh, to uh, Turkey during the terrible uh, earthquake. You know, I, I joined uh, Turkish leaders at one of the mosques uh, last week and we just really called for people to step up but you stepped up already you know what motivated you to do that I mean people's over there right now you know like we say like over 40,000 people they lost their life over 40,000 that's a lot you know it's it's just hard people are suffering over there it's you know like they need our help and I always say, when people, they ask you help, please help them right away. Don't wait. And, you know, right now, they need my help more than ever. And, you know, like, I think like, as, a, as just a human, as like Turkish guys, just human, I need, I need to do this. It's the right thing to do. And, you know, your, your, your pizza a place is called Champion. But in my book, every time I'm around you, you're the real champion. And I cannot thank you enough. You inspire me when we stand side by side on Wednesdays. And I'm looking forward uh, to stopping and seeing you on Sundays. Uh, it's just a real call that we have. Uh, all we need is uh, one day a week. If people would just give their time one hour, one hour a week, I like to say, one hour a week of really dedicating our time to giving back to people, uh, we could accomplish so much. And you personify that. You personify it every day. And I cannot thank you enough. And I look forward to uh, you and I continue to do great things together in this great city. And so thank you so much. Uh, My good friend, Haki, the founder of Champion Pizza. And really, your story is motivating. And it tells us, never give up. There's always an opportunity. Thank you very much. Give up should never be an option. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Me. 
And this is the information I wanted to share today. I hope to see you for another episode of Get Stuff Done Cast.